Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. I want to be a policeman, so I went to an open day at a college, and literally by chance, I walked through the catering block at the college, into the kitchen, and it was full of all these guys, noise, steam, the white tool, hats, copper pans, and I was like, yeah, this looks pretty cool. Let's try this. And my mum and dad were like, what? For some reason, when I was younger, training to be a chef, I always ended up on the fish section, and there's a certain skill in learning how to cook fish and seafood. Yeah, style of cooking, really, it's not about me, it's not about the chefs, it's about the ingredients. And then at the same time, when I sit down and eat something, I don't want to know what's that, what's that. I don't like wishy-washy stuff. I like strong, punchy, bold flavours without overpowering. Makes the meal a bit more celebratory. So hi, my name is Tony Fleming. I'm executive chef of La Ponde de la Tour restaurant by Tower Bridge. Today we're going to be cooking a marinière of sea bass, which celebrates all English seafood produce. First and foremost, like bass, so this is like a good four or five kilo sea bass, line core from a day boat down in Cornwall. And yeah, this is a big fish. Not necessarily have to be this big, but you know, gives us a good yield here. Mm. Okay, so we take off all the fins, just to make it easier to fill it. And then we just need to score down the side. So we come just behind the gills, down to the backbone. I love cooking fish. I do believe that in the UK we have some of the best seafood shellfish there is to offer on the planet, to be honest. And this dish really does sort of showcase some of the best, best of that. Lift it off. Nice clean fillet. All the flesh left on the fillet. None of it left on the bones at all. Then we need to remove the pin bones. Bigger the fish, but obviously bigger the bones, you need to remove them. The fresher the fish, the harder the bones are to come out. It's super tight, the flesh. As the fish gets older, it gets softer, the bones will slip out a lot easier. So these are really difficult to get out because they're super, super fresh. So we've got our sea bass fillet. Now we just need to portion it. So this one's probably going to give us three portions, three nice portions. So we'll just portion it across there, and about there. And we've got a nice portion. So we just need to score the skin. The skin always retracts, always curls up, obviously, from the heat. So if you score it, that'll just stop it from curling up, and then we have it there. Okay, so that's our portion of sea bass ready to go in the steamer. Okay, so the shellfish part of the dish is scallops, brown shrimps, fresh prawns, and mussels. So our shellfish in the UK is sought after, really. I mean, a lot of it's exported. The Spanish love our hake. The Chinese love our crabs, you know, it's sought after. And that makes me want to like use it even more because it comes from our country and we have the best shorelines, nice cold waters. Yeah, I really, we're lucky to have such so much on our doorstep, really. So for the mussels, we are going to use a few shallots, garlic, thyme, and a few aromats. So in the pan, sliced shallots, a little bit of sliced garlic. And give that for about a minute just to take the rawness out. Then we've got some thyme, star anise, peppercorns. I'll take a little bit of flavour first. So we fry all this off. So if you're throwing those mussels straight into a hot pan and putting wine and shallots in, they haven't got enough time to get any flavour out of the shallots and the wine. So let's get the shallots in there, let's get the wine in there, let's get the flavour in there, then put the mussels into that flavour, then put a lid on and then slowly cook it. So that's been cooking now for a couple of minutes, Re reduced uh, slightly, burn off the alcohol, and then we just tip the mussels into the pan, into the juice, give it a little, a little flick. Just to stir it all through. And then lid on. So you're getting all the heat through the pan. They steam slightly. Minute, minute and a half. They'll be ready, that's it. Okay, mussels are cooked two minutes. So you can see they're nicely all open. Just gonna pour those into the colander. And there we go. And then we've got the juice underneath. We're gonna make our sauce. All ready to go, full of flavor. Don't need to add anything else to that. Just gonna pass this sauce through a fine sieve. Might be a little bit of grit stuff for the mussels, which you wanna get rid of. And all we're going to do with this sauce, we're just going to reduce that slightly, probably about by about half, add some double cream, a little bit of butter, a little bit of lemon juice, chives, done. So we'll put that back on there. So we're just going to cook these prawns, and we just got a little bit of vegetable stock with a few aromats in. So just off boiling. So we just drop them in, take it off the heat, leave it for a three minutes, and then they're ready to go. Right, so these you just had like a minute, minute and a half, just to cook gently, 85 degrees, lift them out. So take those out and then we're just gonna shell those and just have, the, just have the tails, yeah? So just take off the heads and then peel off the shell. You can keep the shells as well, plenty of flavor here. You know, if you're making some sort of, you know, Thai broth or something like that, quite popular, the, you know, the prawn shells and the heads, loads of flavor in there. Okay, then with the prawn tails, again, we're just gonna cut them into sort of bite-sized portions, each prawn into three. 
And just make sure that's nice and clean like that. That's what you're looking for, yeah? Open it up with a knife and then pick it out. You don't want to be buying into that. Trim off the end piece. So diver scallops, obviously diver are important. The dredge ones, no good. The dredge just drags across the bottom of the seabed, completely ruins the habitat. You can't grow scallops there again, so absolutely you have to be hand dived. So just open the scallop, scrape it down the flat side of the shell, and pull her open. Okay, so you've got the muscle here on the scallop, yeah? Just need to dig away on that muscle, and then she's out, okay? So then you just slip into a bowl. Right, so then you need to release the skirt off the scallop. You see the muscle there, you just need to pinch it with your thumb and your finger to go through like that. Once you've broken that, the rest will just ease off. Do quite gently, you don't want to rip the flesh, so you get one nice piece, and the rest will just come off a nice piece. So that's it, take them off, then we're just going to wash them, drop them in, and just move them around, just to remove any sort of surface dirt. That's it, and then onto a cloth, and they're ready to go. So with the scallops, Similar to the bass, as soon as they come out of the shell, they're very soft. So you need to let them rest in the fridge for a few hours, overnight preferably, so they're nice and firm. So just onto the chopping board, three slices per scallop, one scallop per portion, so into three. When we do this, good to get these at room temperature. We'll leave them out for like 10 minutes, because we've got to serve them raw, we don't want them fridge cold. For the mussel sauce, we've got the juice in the pan, we've reduced it by 50%, uh, just to intensify the flavor, nothing else in there at all. So then double cream in, about 300 millilitres. Then all we need to do, bring that back to the boil, let everything come together, and you probably need to simmer it for a minute or two, knob of butter, squeeze of lemon juice. Then we're gonna give it a little bit of a blend to make it lighter. And then what we're gonna do, I just saved back a little bit of the mussel juice, drop in the prawn pieces, just a little sprinkle of uh, crevettes in there as well. So we've taken the mussels from the shells, so we just picked them from the shells. We're gonna keep the shells to garnish the plate. So just drop them in as well. And then literally just gonna warm that through a few seconds on the side. All we've got to do now is do the vegetables. Raised fennel and orange. So orange and fennel go well together. Fennel's great with uh, seafood, aniseed, that sort of flavor. So we're just gonna cut this into chunks. So we take off the top of the fennel, take off just the outside piece because it's exposed to the outside a little bit, a bit tougher. Keep all of this, use that, chop it up, put it in with the mussels when you cook the mussels, put it in with the prawns when you cook the prawns. You wanna keep the root on just to keep it together, then cut it into eight pieces. So nice, nice wedges, like that. Right, so in a pan, a little bit of vegetable oil, sunflower oil, as you wish. Fettle in, just a little bit of colour, not too much. A little bit of salt into the pan. So you season at the beginning, season a little bit halfway through, then just finish with a little bit of salt at the end, you know? So you're building up the seasoning all the way through the dish. And then, just for a bit of depth of flavour, garlic and thyme's always a bit of a classic. Let's smash a couple of cloves, just throw that in at the same time, just so it roasts. Roast all that together. Okay, so then a uh, couple of minutes, just brown enough, then we'll turn her over. So there you go, a nice little bit of colour. Not too much, it'll be too strong. And then what we do, orange juice and butter. We've got to put it in at the same time into a hot pan so it emulsifies. Okay, so nice and hot, orange juice in, butter. You want about 25, 30 grams of butter. And you can see as that rapidly boils, you're building a nice emulsion. And now I'm going to put some salt in, a little bit of mold and sea salt. Then what we're going to do, we're going to put a cartouche or just a piece of greaseproof paper. Just pop that on the top, like that. So just on the side there for five or six minutes, won't take long, just so it's soft in the middle, then it's ready to go. And then just in case the dish wasn't decadent enough, we're just going to try in a little bit of truffle just for fun. Just like a few slices, not too much. To be honest, it's not absolutely necessary this, but it does like give it a little bit of sort of bit of a punch here and there. You know, I said strong flavors earlier, just helps break the dish up a little bit. So just a few sticks like that, ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna steam the bass, a little bit of salt. So you can just use a normal bamboo steamer or whatever. We steam it skin side down, so you get a nice flat finish to it. You can steam it this way, it's gonna curl up. So to help it keep flat, piece of greaseproof paper, fish skin side down and a little bit of salt. So into our steamer. And she goes, it'll take five minutes. Yeah, it'll be a little bit undercooked when we take it out. Again, let it rest, we let our fish rest because it'll continue to cook. So that comes out of the steamer nice and hot. If that's cooked at that second, by the time I put it on the plate, the plate's gone to the restaurant, the customer's taken 10 photos of it for Instagram, then they start eating it, then it's gonna be overcooked. Okay, so that's five minutes on the bass. So that's ready. So just lift her out. 
turn it over. Just a, a way to test to see if it's cooked, which is quite a handy way to do. If you just take a wooden cocktail stick, poke it into the fattest part of the fish, you should have no resistance. If you're pushing it in, it's slightly resistant, then yeah, it needs a little bit longer. But if you put it in and only want it to just glide through, and then that'll be just cooked. And as I said, it'll continue to cook as we go through the rest of the plate. So that's, that's perfect, that's nice. So then what we're gonna do, just a bit of lemon juice on the top. Always lemon juice with fish, always. A little bit of molded sea salt on the top, and the fish is ready. Right, we're gonna plate now. So there's the fennel, cooked in the nice orange emulsion, yeah. Two pieces <clears throat> on the bottom, two wedges. There's a little bit of the juice, not too much. Right, so fennel on, and then scallop. There's three slices, raw on the plate. And again, just a little bit of salt on top of each scallop. Don't know why, you know, when you bite into it, it will taste a little bit under-seasoned. So here's the mussels, the prawns poached lightly. We dropped a couple of the shells back in there just to, to garnish the plate, and then the shrimp shell. So in between each scallop, drop a shell, and then put a mussel back inside each one. Okay, then prawns over the top randomly. So this is really that like marinier, you know that you've got the mussels, stock, scallops, prawns, like super. If you love seafood, this is the dish. I see cooking as two, two different, I look at it two different ways really. I look at it as like the passion of eating and I also look at it as a technique and skill as a craftsman. And I think the technique and the profession gets missed a lot. I think probably 30, 40 years ago, it didn't exist. Cooking and chefs in Britain was never really regarded as a top end profession. Now, in London, we've probably got some of the best restaurants in the world and some of the best chefs come to this country to work. It's a great career to do. And then they guys, we've got our, our carrot and our uh, courgette, just slightly cooked in an emulsion and a, and a bit of salt. Okay, so just carrot and courgette over the top, just drop it everywhere like that. Then we've got our sea bass, it takes center stage obviously of the dish. So it's going to sit that bass right in the center of the dish. And into the sauce, we're going to get a little drop of lemon juice. Generous amount of chives, stir that through. Then we're just gonna spoon over the top, not too much, a little bit, just dress it over the fish. You don't want to be too much, you don't wanna be like a soup, you know? So here we've got some oyster leaves, just a nice little garnish, and again, just helps with the whole seafood flavor, like that. And then our batter on a truffle, helps visually as well, gives it a little bit of color, and like I said earlier, that earthy, earthy kick gives it another dimension. And then put those around the outside. And then that's it, then we're just gonna serve, I don't want to put too much sauce on the plate. So we're just gonna serve a little bit of sauce in a jug on the side. And then that's it. So that's our steamed fillet of Cornish bass, uh, orange and garlic braised fennel, uh, marinara British seafood, and then sauce Normandy served on the side with a little bit of truffle.